So Minister said, it is not easy to do the right thing. She's right, I could not agree more. But I also think it's important to say it's worthwhile. And we have witnesses here, the ladies that are hiding in dark, but definitely they should not be in dark because they are our light. Light with the information they are trying to send, light with their courage to tell the stories, to reveal what is happening in our societies. And just for doing that, they are attacked and they are attacked fiercely. And what we can do as international organizations, what the governments can do, is a question of our time. We are great in adopting resolutions and documents. We have action plans, resolutions, declarations, laws, and all these wonderful words on paper. But when it comes to solution and action, we are not doing well as a society. There is no a real movement to find a way to stop this kind of harassment that many are facing. And of course, here today we are talking about female colleagues. But in no way we are trying to say that the male journalists are not abused and attacked online. But the difference is great. Rape threats, death threats, and all this information that I started receiving in 2014, when I sat with my colleagues, not just in my organization, but in other organizations, in order to start looking at the solutions, looking how important this is. And then I started hearing the voices, their voices, and the voices of many other, telling horrifying stories, but also stories that were not good for journalism, stories that were not good for our societies, because they were not getting help from law enforcement agencies, from their media companies. They were going underground, or they were closing their Twitter, Facebook accounts, and they stopped performing journalism, which is not a solution at all. We started organizing meetings, started organizing events where we would bring academia, psychologists, law enforcement agencies, in order to see the way forward. And there is always agreement in the room like this one. We are partners in crime. The crime is that we want to defend free speech. But sometimes we have to talk with the audience that disagree with us. There are people, there are politicians these days, also in democratic countries, that are not people that are for free speech. They want to suppress it, they want to stop it, and they want to do everything possible so there is no criticism and the voices are silent. So what can we do? What should be the role of international organizations? How can wonderful, courageous NGOs that are tackling this issue take more responsibility? How they can get more power? I think one of the main issue is to join our voices. We need to have a very strong voice in defending journalism, in defending journalists. They are our eye opener. Without journalists that are ready to tackle stories of criminal and corruption, we would not be able to make decisions. And sometimes I think in democracies we take it for granted. We think it's there, nobody's going to destroy this. But just look at the situation globally at the moment. I think we are all very much aware that we need to take action. We need to make some tough, painful decisions. We need to engage as citizens as well. It's not just the governments or international organizations. All of us, we need to stand together in order to protect media freedom, free speech and journalism. At the end, I would just like to salute all of you journalists, all of you courageous ladies, for your dedication, for your professionalism, for your courage, that you are first ready to share the stories, but then even more to continue with journalism that is so important for the well-being of our societies.